So you might be familiar with the popular phrase, pretty privilege. You've heard yeah. this phrase? Mm -hmm. Very big right now. It's the idea that more attractive people are also perceived as kinder, smarter, more likable in general, and have the privilege of experiencing that. The halo effect is the basis of that. So what it is is a cognitive bias that shows how our overall impression of someone like, they're nice, influences our evaluation of their more specific traits. So mm. we think if they're nice, they also must be smart. Mm -hmm. So it's compounding our beliefs about someone based on either our initial positive perception or our initial negative perception. So why, why is it called the halo effect? It is called the halo effect because as we see in a lot of religious art, a halo surrounds a figure's head and then mm. bathes their entire body in the glow of its light. Just like the effect suggests that one perceived trait, the halo, so mm -hmm. for example, they're funny is your halo, bathes the rest of their character in the same suggestive light, which might make you also conclude, oh, they're smart too. So this could have like a positive or negative effect on someone? Big time. And there is a lot of proof and there are so many studies about how this affects family dynamics, work, um, oh, yeah. obviously relationships, politics, health. Psychologist Edward Thorndike coined the term the halo effect in 1920 after an experiment done with commanding officers in the army, where he asked them to rate their soldiers on qualities like leadership, physical appearance, intelligence, loyalty, and dependability. And Thorndike wanted to determine how ratings of one quality bled over onto perspectives of other characteristics, and he found that high ratings of a particular quality correlated to high ratings of other characteristics, while on the inverse side, negative ratings led to lower ratings of other characteristics. And several different studies have corroborated this. One study even found that jurors were less likely to believe that attractive people were guilty of criminal behavior. Oh, this uh, has huge effects being a juror. So are there other studies about this? Yeah, there's plenty of studies. There's one in particular that I found very interesting that was done in a school where teachers were grading students' tests and papers and the students with more popular and attractive sounding names no. were consistently graded higher than students with less popular, unattractive sounding names. How, that's something you have no control of. The halo effect obviously is affects all areas of life, even in the workplace. It can lead to very unfair differences in how employees are treated, especially in disciplinary issues. So for example, in the workplace, imagine that there are two teams coming to give you a sales pitch. Mm -hmm. And one team is a pair of fit, attractive, well-dressed people. Okay. The other team are not deemed conventionally attractive. Perhaps they're a shorter, wearing cheaper looking clothing. Even if the two teams gave the exact same sales pitch, our cognitive bias would make us favor the more attractive team 100% of the time. And they would also probably experience much more successful career across the board. I'm sure, I'm, and they do. So the halo effect is also the marketing world's secret weapon, like you were saying about branding. Wow. Which is why the world's most attractive and likable celebrities are the faces of high-end brands. But you know, it makes people feel that if the brand is good enough for someone like Jennifer Lawrence, right. then it must be a good product. And this even extends to the way things are priced. And I have fallen victim to this so many times. So people will assume that a more highly priced item is of higher quality, and then they're actually more likely to spend that money on a product of equal value than one that's cheaper. I do this all the time. Me too, I'm like, oh, if there's two protein powders and this one's more expensive, it's probably better. Yeah, it must be better because they need more of my money. Right. And because, you know, Laura Linney is selling it to me. And I, yeah. I, I mean, I can easily relate this to my own life in a kind of conversation slash argument I had with my partner where we were talking about how if a man is unattractive and approaches me at a bar, I'll automatically think he's creepy. Whereas if an attractive man approaches me and maybe has a similar pickup line, I won't be as creeped out. Interesting. You know? Oh, I can totally see that. I feel like I've done that before too. Yeah. Or even someone across the room looking at me. I'd be like, oh, creepy versus, oh, what's going on over there? Like, do I need to investigate? Just because I think they're hot. But when really the hot person is often the creep. Perhaps the most dangerous aspect though of the halo effect is its role in health. 
So doctors mm. will treat more attractive patients oh, differently no. than those they deem unattractive and therefore unworthy of proper treatment. No. Again, a huge issue forever, especially with the role that racism plays in cognitive bias. Oh. People of color are constantly misdiagnosed, denied proper health care, or simply ignored by health care and insurance providers and medical professionals and therapists when even trying to express their health concerns or ailments. Do you think it's all na nurture or is it nature? Like, do you think it's totally socially and society constructed or is this something just naturally as humans, we use that vision, you know, like one of our senses and it just assume, our brain just starts to assume all these things, or, or both. I think it's definitely both because there are also studies I've read where animals will choose more attractive mates, mm. or you know, even if it comes down to your survival, your biology, yeah. you'll choose, the, the female will mate with the stronger, more capable, bigger male. And dogs even learned to domesticate themselves and make themselves more cute so that humans <laughs> oh would take care of them. So true. It's so, it's all based on, this is what the halo effect is all about. It's really linking into the conversation that we've all been having about pretty privilege that I'm seeing on social yeah. media all the time. I mean, how often do you see, you know, people in line at a club and then two beautiful people walk up and cut the line? Classic. It's just right there all the time. To me, this isn't even a conspiracy. This is just a fact. This is just a cognitive yeah. bias that concretely exists within all of us. And we can try to fight it. We should try to fight it. Yeah, is that the answer? Work against the conditioning or the nature? Yeah, I think it can be summed up in a popular quote, don't judge a book by its cover. Mm, we've Read all the heard book. That. Read the book. Read the book.